Melinda here. Welcome back to Get Off My Lawn, Please. Today I want to talk about my, my dad. Uh, but first I do want to say that um, already this morning I've gotten two scammer attempts. It has to stop. I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of it all. Anyway, I don't want this to evolve into a rant, but um, my dad was born just before the Depression, the Great American Depression. He was the youngest of 12 children, uh, although there were not 12 alive. The oldest one, and sadly and very unfortunately, when he was a toddler, there was a gun accident and um, his life was taken. He was very young. And then um, the next sibling, she died from the Spanish uh, flu pandemic. And, but anyway, um, so he grew up on a farm in Texas, central Texas, with rolling hills. Beautiful. I still have a fondness for that type of land, even though I don't live on that type of land right now. Mike Meredith and I live on the coastal plain outside of Houston. Very flat. And we might potentially having a hurricane coming this way. Oh, joy. Won't be the first one. Just have to pray it's not too bad. Um, anyway, Daddy grew up on the farm, had the typical antics of a farm kid. Um, it wasn't easy because it was during the Depression. They were very poor. He told me about times when the food he had was like bacon grease on a piece of bread. Ooh, not healthy at all. But uh, my dad was mostly Czech. His uh, grandparents came here roughly about, I'm trying to remember, maybe 1877-ish, well, his grandfather. His father was, my grandfather was born in this country. Anyway, but his mother was not. His mother was born in the Moravian, one of the, Mora in the Moravian province of the Czech Republic, which at that time was Czechoslovakia. She was a little girl when she came here. Um, so this would be my grandmother, my father's mother. Um, she did not speak English her whole life. Um, and it was interesting. She and my grandfather met one time and then the next time they were married. That generation, they wanted to, they wanted Czechs to marry Czechs and preferably the Moravians to marry Moravians. And they, they spoke the language, even though my grandfather was born here, he still spoke Moravian, he was bilingual. And interestingly enough, this is a side note, um, one of my brother-in-laws was from a smaller town, basically a village next to where my family is from. And he was there visiting the cemetery, visiting his mother, and there was this, this uh, senior citizen there sitting there just on a bench writing and writing, and he, he got curious, he talked to him, and it turns out he was a language professor from the Czech Republic and he was here to study the language because the Moravian dialect that the Texas Czechs speak did not evolve, whereas the dialect in the Czech Republic evolved. So he was here studying that language. Um, my siblings and I do not speak that language because my father did not marry another Czech. And my mother was, not, was looked down upon because she was not Czech. But we'll get more into that in a minute. So um, he grew up, and then um, when they were when he was about thirteen, the farm next door was sold, and my mother and her parents moved in there, and that's how they met. They were neighbors, and um, then life on the farm was hard. It was always hard. Um, but, you know, like any family, my grandfather did the best he could. So uh, World War II rolled around, and of course my dad, um, he had two brothers, two older brothers. 
and because they had a farm they were granted an exemption so because he was the youngest and he wasn't quite old enough anyway he was you know he was the one that stayed at home but uh, he ended up with the, going to Houston to get a welding job or anyway he ended up getting a job in Houston but then it got to the point where my uh, the brother that was closest to him the oldest one was in the Army Air Corps. He was a bombardier on a B-17. The other one was in um, Georgia, I think Fort Benning, and it became obvious that he was gonna be landing on the beaches at D-Day. And that upset my grandmother greatly. So my father told her, we'll get him home and I'll go into the Navy. So he goes into the Navy and while he's doing his boot camp thing, they line them up and they tell, have them number off, one, two, one, two, one, two. Well, the ones were in the Navy and the twos went to the Marines. And my father was lucky enough to be in the Navy. And the reason he chose the Navy was because he hated snakes. He thought he'd have less snakes to deal with in the Navy. And that, that fear of snakes is prevalent through the whole family. But anyway, so um, he and my mother, I think were engaged at that point. So he went to the Navy and then it was 14 or 17 months later, he came home on leave and married her. Then he went back to the Navy and he served aboard the USS Portland CA-33, which was a heavy cruiser. That ship saw a lot of action, had a lot of battle stars, and the back end was shot off of the Guadalcanal, and my dad was part of the replacement crew for that. And at first that ship went to Australia for repairs because basically it fought in the South Pacific a lot. So it went to Australia for repairs, and then they brought it back to Mare Island in San Francisco to work on. And that's when my dad got on the boat. And he was a signalman, so he was always up on the signal bridge. And he didn't talk to us much about the war. I don't, I think, for a, a farm boy from, from Central Texas, and you go off to the war and you end up in the South Pacific, that's probably really shocking to you. And he dealt with it the best way he could, but he never talked to any of his children much about what happened to him. He occasionally mentioned things, but um, not in great detail. I think, it, you know, it was an atrocity to him what went down, and he didn't want to put that on us. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was an American. He loved America and given the family so much, and uh, he wanted to do his duty, and in fact, he did his duty. I mean, it takes great courage, in my opinion, to stand on a signal bridge and you've got a kamikaze coming straight at you. And the only thing that saves your life is that you have really good gunners on your ship that shot the wing off the thing, so it veers off. But that was the reality of the war. It was harsh. Now, when I met Mike, and he did tell Mike some stories. And Mike is going to write a book about him. But, um, you know, he saw lots of different things. And he did meet up with one of his cousins who was also in the Navy at Pearl Harbor. Think about that. Two farm boys from Texas meet in the middle of the war at Pearl Harbor. And we do have some photos of that. Um, and then, um, anyway, if you get a chance, look up that ship. USS Portland CA-33. The only thing that's left of it is like the mast, some part of the mast or something up in Portland, Maine, because the ship was named after Portland, Maine. But anyway, so he did his thing there and they ended up at one point in Europe bringing troops back and he had an appendicitis on board ship so they had to do surgery in the middle of the ocean. Oh, and by the way, he did say that they were in one hurricane on that ship and he was on his uh, duty on his ship, on his spot, on the signal bridge and the ship tilted so much he could have reached down and touched the water. That's a lot of tilting. Listing, whatever you wanna call it. Anyway, um, meanwhile, mom went to Austin, Texas and worked. She lived with two of my dad's nieces because since my dad was the youngest at 12, he had nieces that were his age and some of them I think are even older. But anyway, so he got home and they set up house together. And there were eight of us born to that and uh, life wasn't easy. They did farm for a while, 
Um, eventually, though, he ended up taking a job in Houston, and he moved the family to Houston. That's where I grew up. But um, anyway, life was, like I said, life was not easy. Even then, they had their ups and downs. Economically, it was always up and down. I mean, Houston, I don't know if any of you know this, Houston has always been real big on oil. And it's changed a little bit now, but most of the industries are based on oil. And so when oil goes down, Houston suffers. And it carries all throughout Houston. Yes, we have boom periods and people show up here, but then when it's bust, it's bust. So, um, daddy was a welder and he worked it down at the shipyards for a while. Then he eventually got a job closer to home uh, for, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It was a company that made like oil, oil stuff. So again, oil. But anyway, um, my dad, right, like, I think I'm trying to remember the timeline. Right after Mike and I got married, he started coughing. And the insurance company messed around, messed around. Finally, he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And, uh, and I, we think he, mom, meanwhile, we think she, he was hiding that her memory, she's having like memory dementia issues, but it became real prevalent when it was obvious he was dying. It was not good. And he suffered greatly and he didn't deserve that. I don't want to talk about that. <sighs> anyway, let's talk about mom. Even though she was not Czech and she was looked down upon in the Czech family, her family, interestingly enough, was an early American family. They had been here a long, long time. They started off in North Carolina. Then they went to Virginia, which became Kentucky. Then they went to Missouri. And then they ended up in Texas. So that family basically was like the true American history lesson. They followed the Westford expansion down to Texas. And um, also, my mother's, uh, well, first, my mother's father was pure German. They came over from Germany um, in the mid 1800s. Uh, but her mother was the one that was the, from the early American family. And her family, both sides, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, both sides of her family were extremely strong Christians. Like, part of them were like total conservative Christians where men on one side of the church, women on the other side. And then my mother's grandfather, maternal grandfather, um, he was the son of a fire and brimstone preacher. So, you know, as I said, and that line also was here for a very long time. And as in, in fact, they were in um, Arkansas at that crossroads town, crossroads town during the Texas Revolution. And uh, uh, his upline, I can't remember which great grandfather, came down to Texas during the revolution. He was a teamster. And uh, so he was involved in that. I have not found the records. I mean, I know he was here, but I just have to find some records on that. And I haven't done any genealogy in a while, but it's kind of a, ha you know, a hobby of mine. But anyway, back to my mom. So uh, it's ironic to me that her line was early American. Part of her family settled Connecticut, too. Uh, so, you know, for her to be looked down upon was just wrong. That's that, some of that clicky stuff, and it's just, it's not right. And by the way, she, her mother and her father were both, had special needs. My grandfather had his arm shot off with a gun while he was bending over. He had, to, he was riding a horse to go open a, I think a gate, and he bent over and the gun off went off accidentally and it shot part of his arm off. And my grandmother had been kicked in the eye by a mule. So she was blind in one eye. So, but they, you know, their life wasn't easy either, but they had two children and, well, actually they had three and one passed away. 
um, my mom and her brother. But anyway, um, where was I going with this? Oh, anyway, um, you know, mom's family, very strong Christian family. Um, and um, she actually converted to Catholicism to marry my father. And we were raised, you know, Catholic, but some of us have moved on. But anyway, you know, my husband, Mike, the author, Mike Sims, um, he's a son of a Baptist preacher and a builder. But um, anyway, so mom, after daddy's illness, and they'd been married over 50 years at this point. It, w it was horrible to watch this whole thing. But anyway, um, mom uh, ended up, she lived with my brother for a while, then she finished, um, she lived with Mike and I. This was before Maribeth was born. In fact, while she was living with us, we found out we were pregnant with Maribeth. But at that point, her dementia had gotten so bad. Uh, my sisters, well, the, actually the whole family, and I was not involved in this because I was really, really sick with morning sickness. And it beca and because mom was living with us, I was deeply involved in her, you know, her care. And it was like, the roles had reversed and it's not easy. I became her, you know, like her parent. And I loved her dearly. She had the patience of a saint. She would have given you the shirt off of her back if she thought it would help you. I mean, I can't say enough about her. My dad was uh, much more uh, authoritarian. Um, I loved him dearly too, but he ran the house and he was kind and caring too. That's the kind of family I came from. Uh, you know, you helped if you could, even total strangers. And that's kind of how Mike and I raised Maribeth with the servant's heart. We both feel that's important. But anyway, I just thought, you know, it's ironic that her family was such a strong Christian family and I ended up marrying the son of a Baptist preacher. But anyway, so um, she lived with us until it became time. She was trying to escape and it was just getting really bad, her Alzheimer's. So she, my sisters decided it was time to put her in a, a box secure facility. And so they did that. But they called Mike and told him, hey, we've decided it's, be it's better for y'all and for her. We don't want anything to happen. She, you know, we were gonna put her in a facility. And he came home to tell me and my heart just shattered. I don't wanna talk about that either. So she was there a good while. Meredith was born. Um, and I had to learn very quickly that um, like when the others had their children, with the exception of one, because he was born after she went to the facility too, my sister's youngest son. But, uh, you know, mom had been there to help them. I didn't have that. She wasn't capable and I understood that, but it didn't make it any easier. But anyway, um, I don't know what else to say, uh, but that's the story. You know, we were raised with the, the thing that you have to work for what you want. You have to work hard, uh, do your best, give people your best, be kind, be caring, which I'd like to think that's how most Americans are raised. And I'm trying, Mike and I are trying to do the same with our daughter, with Maribel. Anyway, that's, I guess you could say that's the story of us. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope you didn't find this boring. I'm sorry if you did. I'm trying to find you, you know, interesting content. This is not as easy as it looks. Anyway, you know, thanks for visiting. Get off my lawn, please. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.